Well, hello there. Let's talk about automation today. Specifically, on a recent video, Sean asked the question, basically asking, once we have automation on a track, so I'm talking about volume automation, which looks like this, where I've adjusted the volume, moved the fader up and down for different sections of the song. And then the question is, what if I just want to automate and increase the overall volume of the vocal up or down? That's basically what Sean is asking here. How do we do that? There's a couple of ways to do that. But first, let me explain maybe what the problem is that people experience. So let's say I'm going to hit play on this and I'll have the volume off just so you can uh, hear me talking as we talk about it. So here is this whole vocal. This is technically the vocal bus has automation on it. And then here is, here's the fader for this bus over here on the left, right there. And what happens if we just watch the fader, it's going to move along with these automation points, right? We have automated it. It is now moving on its own. There's a ghost in the machine. Now, the problem is, currently this, this track is in read mode, which means it's going to read whatever automation is there. So once we write any automation on a track, even if it's just one little bump of automation, the entire track, when we put it in read mode, is kind of locked in to whatever's happening on this blue line. Meaning if we come over here and we say, you know what, I want to turn the vocal up here. We can turn it up and we'll hear it louder and you'll see I've turned it up with the fader, but as soon as I let go, check out what happens to the fader. It stays there for now, but when I stop playback and play again, it goes back to where it was. And when I hit play, it is staying there. So all those movements I just did, nothing actually happened. I could hear them in the moment, but as soon as I stopped playback and started again, the track is being told to read whatever automation is on the track. So the only way to make this fader move now is to switch this into something like touch mode, which means whenever I touch the fader, it's going to record new stuff like this. I'm touching the fader. I'm moving it way up. I'm moving it way down. I'm letting go. And then when I hit stop and play, it is now going to follow exactly what I did there. Now we can come in and make adjustments to these things to our heart's content and it will just follow whatever we tell it to do. But the bigger question is, okay, the, the one main reason that we use vocal automation or volume automation on something like a vocal is at the end of a phrase where the vocalist sings quieter and we want to make sure that that is nice and prominent. That's the thing here. So as the vocal gets quieter, I push the fader up to get louder. That's the main purpose here is just to even out the volume differences between sections. But now let's say I get to the end of my mix and I think, you know what? I really just want the vocal overall to be 2 dB quieter or 2 dB louder. What do I do? Well, I could come move the fader up 2 dB, but we already established that, that doesn't do anything because as soon as I hit play, it goes back to where it was here. What are my options? There are actually a lot of options available to you. And it really just depends on which one you want to do more. The first option, probably the most obvious option, is to select all the automation on the channel like this. And then just hold the mouse over the top section to where it turns into this little horizontal trim tool. And then just click and drag. And so now this is moving all the automation together based on how far I drag it. So you can see if we zoom in, I can't really zoom in right here, but you can see, actually, let me undo it. I'll zoom in so you can see. It gives me the, the left number is the actual volume level of this specific moment in time, and then the right number is the difference. So right now I've turned all the vocal automation down by four decibels. That's fine. You can do that. That's not the way that I tend to do it, um, mainly just for personal preference, but also because you'll notice no matter where you select everything, every time you move it, it creates a new point out here. Somewhere out in the future, that's where I decided to select everything. And it just, it tends to make it a little bit messy for me. I'd prefer to leave it where it was and use a different method for adjusting it. So that's the first method. The second method, this is actually the easiest one of all, is to grab something like Mix Tool, which is just a utility tool in Studio One. Put it at the end of all your plugin chains for that track. So it's not going to affect the volume going into any plugins. And then just use this plugin to adjust the volume. So, you know, I just want to bring the vocal down two decibels. Bam. No problemo. This allows me to turn everything down because the vocal is coming through all the plugins. And it's going after it goes through all the plugins, it goes through the fader. So I'm just inserting a point between the last plugin and the fader to make an adjustment. 
So now I've just adjusted it up or down. I do this a lot in my mixes because I may have some automation in place, but I haven't quite finalized that final vocal level, and I can just very easily turn it up or down here. And the automation remains, and this overall volume adjustment behaves on top of the existing automation. So that's another way. A third way, which is kind of fun, but requires an extra fader in your session, is to create a VCA for this particular fader. So if I right click on this channel, let's slide it over so you can see it a little bit better. If I right click on this channel, I can choose add VCA for selected channels. And the VCA will pop up for me, it pops up on the far right hand side of the session. And I could name this Vox VCA if I want. Now this fader will move, you'll notice when I move the red fader, it moves the vocal fader. Now what's cool about this is now the red fader has no automation on it, but the blue fader does. So if we go find a spot where there's a whole lot of automation happening, like right here, you'll notice the blue fader is going to move. Yep. But if I move the red fader, check it out, the blue fader moves way down over here. But when I hit play, the automation is still in place. So this is really almost identical to what I did with, yeah, to what I did with the mix tool in that I've just adjusted the overall volume. This one actually gives me a visual representation of what's happening. And I can adjust this volume out here on my mixer without having to open up a plugin and make that adjustment. However, you can adjust mix tool from here. If you single click it and you expand your window enough, you can actually adjust the gain right here, which is pretty nifty. I don't think you can type the gain. Okay, if you right click, you can type the gain in. Still, that's a couple extra clicks that I'd rather not have. Uh, so for me, I'll either open the plugin. Typically, I'm only making this adjustment once, so I don't really need to get back to it all the time. Or I'll have this VCA adjusting it from the outset. Final way to do this, there's like I said, there's lots of ways to do this. You could also just whatever your final plugin in the chain is. For me, in this instance, it's a second EQ on this channel. You can just adjust the output gain of that EQ. I'll do this in a pinch where I'm like, okay, mix is almost done. Vocal needs to be up just another dB. I'll just adjust the output gain of the last plugin in the chain to be what I need. It does the same thing as the mix tool, but it's just very simple. I don't have to add anything new. So hopefully that made sense for you. There are probably, I'm sure, there are even more ways to do this. You could run this. You could output this channel into another bus, and then that bus can move the volume while the automation stays in place. There's many, many solutions to this. This one to me is the most elegant. And then someone's going to ask, let's say you just want to adjust the volume of a certain section. So you said something like chorus one is just too loud, we could just select the whole thing like this. And then it's only going to adjust chorus one. So that way the automation stays in place. And we've adjusted just the chorus. Or if you wanted to get real crazy, you can add automation on your VCA and adjust just the automation on the VCA for that chorus. So it brings the whole thing down three decibels, but the little minute automation is still happening on the individual channel. I've never done that. That makes my brain hurt, but there are some people for whom that will connect and they'll think, ah, that's brilliant. So off to the races, have fun automating. I will just, as a final point, one of my weaknesses as a mix engineer is I am a little bit lazy when it comes to automation, specifically volume automation, but it really can make or break that final little 5% of the mix to get everything to feel just at the perfect level from the start of the song to the very end of the song. It's worth investing that little bit of extra time to do a little bit of volume automation, if nothing else, than on your lead vocal. Um, if you've never done it before, I encourage you to go try it. We've got more videos on how to set up automation, but it is a handy tool to have.